Hi, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain and today you can see my screen looks a little different to normal. I have two versions of Shortcuts A Lot on my laptop. The first one on the left is Shortcuts A Lot 4. The second one on the right is Shortcuts A Lot 4 Pro. Now in the interests of uh, complete honesty, I'm going to say that I did not purchase the, four, uh, the Pro version. I contacted Craft Edge and basically said, look, I've done a lot of videos on Shortcuts a lot and I do sometimes get asked about the difference between that and the Pro version, but I don't have it. If you upgrade me to the Pro version, I'll quite happily do some videos and tutorials on it. And so they very kindly did. There's no strings attached. They didn't say I've got to say anything about it at all. They just said, yeah, here's a key. Um, there you go. So they know me well enough by now to, uh, to know that I'm going to be completely honest about it. <laughs> if I didn't like it, I would say so. Um, I've only had it for about 24 hours, but actually I like it. Um, it's got a few features in there that I happen to think are quite useful. Uh, when you look at the programs, they are identical to look at apart from the opening logo. And all the tools on the side here operate in the same way as they do on the basic version. There's no great difference. With the importing, there is a difference. If you go to File and Import on the basic version, I get all readable files. And if you go down the list, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we have seven different types. And memorize those, because <laughs> I certainly won't. And go to cancel. And if I go to the pro version, and I go to file import, all readable files, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the two which are uh, different are the PLT and the DXF. I've not come across PLT before, uh, some kind of plotter software, probably used by vinyl cutters that I've not come across. DXF I have come across before, and again it's another form of uh, cut line. And I have had DX, DXF files before which I've wanted to use and couldn't without uh, translating them into SVG or something. So there are a few more import options. And again, there are different export options. If I go to the basic one and go to export, I have SVG, bitmap, JPEGs, PINGs, TIFFs and scan and cut. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And press cancel on there. Go on, cancel. There we go. Took a moment to do that. And we'll cancel that. And if I go to the pro ver I didn't want to do that. If I go to the pro version and I go to file export. I have SVGs, bitmap, JPEGs, TINGs. I've got Scan and Cut and HPGL Plotter on there as well. So if you use either of those formats, then you might find that very useful indeed. And I'm just going to go to the cancel. There we go. So importing and exporting different file options. Now the other thing which is different there are a couple of different effects which you don't have in the basic version, which you do have in the pro version. Now you notice the first one in the list here is 3D Extrude. That's in the pro version, okay? You do not have that in the basic version. And if I go to 3D Extrude, and I just play around with it, you can see what it does, okay? It's a very common tool used in graphic design and either you like it or you don't, um, yeah, this is a matter of choice, but it is another option which is offered in the pro version. The other ones that you don't have in the basic version are tiling. 
Okay. Tiling is for if you want to cut something that is bigger than your machine can cope with or your mat can cope with. And basically you have a choice. You can either set your own column sizes or you can use evenly spaced ones. You can have fixed width, you can have custom. And you see all these red oblongs here, those are the tiles. So you can have more tiles, you can have less tiles. You can have rows horizontally, you can have rows vert vertically. Blah. And basically it means that you can cut those pieces and be able to match them up perfectly. We are talking perfect alignment here. So if you have vinyl and you've got a piece that you want to do for a wall, for example, you can cut it in tile version and then you can simply match it up on the wall and make it into a very big design. So that is quite useful. It can be useful too if you're doing the same sort of thing with a paper design, but with paper you might want to put in overlaps so that you can um, stick your paper together on the back with sticky tape or something. Okay, and those blue lines here are the overlap lines, and you can put in as big or as small of an overlap as you want. That's your choice. So that is the tile function. Okay, and the other one that we have is weeding. Now, weeding is for vinyl cutting, and this one gives you various options, and they're all explained in the box here to add weeding lines. Now, why would you want to add weeding lines? Well, you might want to add weeding lines if you have something that is very delicate, for example, and there are all different types of weeding lines here. If you have something like lettering, quite often, if you have individual letters and you're trying to weed them from a piece of vinyl. What you actually want to do in most cases is leave your letters on the backing paper and take away the rest of it. Okay, but when you pull away your bigger pieces on the outside, quite often you end up pulling away letters as well. And it's easier if you put weeding lines in to keep those letters in place on your backing because you can choose to add some weeding lines in the more delicate areas so that you don't take away a big chunk. I mean, quite often weeding is a difficult process because we only have two hands and quite often you need four or five or six really with weeding and you have to hold something down, you have to pull something away and then something lifts up and you could do with another finger or two. So that is what the weeding does. It makes it easier for you to take out the bits that you don't want. I will do another video at some point later on and you know, go over it in more detail. But that's what it's for and that's what it's useful for and a very good function it is too. Now the other place where there is a big difference is when you go to the cut settings. Now this is the one for the basic version. As you can see there is only one tab and you should be fairly au fait by now I would imagine with the settings for the general settings. Okay, and that is the only one that you get, so I'm going to close that one down. However, when I go to the pro version and I go to the cutter, ah, now this is different. I have the general one, which I'm going to completely ignore. The next one I have is cut by colour. This one operates in a very similar way to the Silhouette Studio software, where it will cut it according to the colour of your object. And if I click on one blade or the other, I can switch off either both, or I can switch them both on, or I can switch one off, and I can change my mind and put the other one on, and it will cut whichever one I have the blade selected on. So that is very, very useful. I tend to use that type of function for when I want to do things like score lines. I will set my score line to say purple and have my cut lines black. And if I know that I have my score lines as purple, I can select my purple color 
and I can then alter my cut settings in accordance to what I want to do because I generally don't set it to a dashed line. I generally do a much lighter, much gentler version of a solid line. I prefer it. So that is really quite handy. Now you notice that here I've got cut all colours as a single job. Basically what that will do is everything which has got a blade next to it, it will just keep going until it's all finished and it will use every colour that you have checked. If I go to cut each colour separately as separate jobs, it will pause after each individual colour and that's useful if you need to change your settings. Okay, so that is what that is used for. Now the other thing that we have as well on this cut settings page is tiles. And as you can see, if you have set tiles in your design, this is where you can set them to cut. Now I can switch that one off, for example, and decide to cut the next one, or the next one, or the next one. Or I could switch that one on and have that one on and have these off. So it will cut whatever it is I have the um, blade setting next to, okay? That's pretty self-explanatory. And I can also do things like cut extra. So I've got this and I want to cut copies and I want two columns and I want two rows. Invalid input because the cutting length is larger than the material length. Okay, fine. But you get the general idea. If my page was big enough, I would have been able to have two rows of two columns and I could cut that. And I could choose if I cut by color, for example, and I switch off the black one, I would just be cutting copies of the green one. So that is also a very useful feature, particularly if you're doing mass production of one particular thing. Like at Christmas, if you do all the same Christmas cards, for example, some people do. Or if you're doing a whole load of Christmas tags or something to that effect. Or maybe you just want to do a whole load of one particular embellishment. You can do it. And you needn't have a whole page of them actually on your work page. You can set it to do it as a cut setting option. All right. So those are the main differences between Shortcuts a lot 4 and Shortcuts a lot 4 Pro. I hope you found this useful. And as I said, I will be doing some more videos which show the use of some of the different features. Thanks very much for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.